Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I have a special episode of the Reality Revolution today. I have R.J. Spina, an amazing author who wrote the book Supercharged Self-Healing. And once you get to know R.J.'s story, if you are struggling with any sort of health problem or just dealing with ascension in general or meditation, R.J. has so much information to offer, so much wisdom. And you know, go out and get his book, RJ's story is amazing. RJ has devoted his adult life to teaching people how to raise their frequency, improve the quality of their life, heal themselves, and experience the blissful state of truly being free. He'd spent the better part of his life exploring profound metaphysical truths through his own higher conscious exploration, but it was waking up from emergency life-saving surgery, still permanently paralyzed from the chest down, paralysis that will awaken him to the highest truth that he'd ever encountered. He could heal himself and walk again. It was something that he instantaneously knew and he knew how he would do it. He says, my body was destroyed, but I was free. It was as if my old operating system of awareness had been replaced with great enhanced model with far greater receptivity, bandwidth and processing ability. Within two months, RJ was walking with the help of a physical therapist on the 100th day after surgery, just as he had originally predicted on the very first day after emergency life-saving surgery, he was walking on his own. All the conditions he'd been diagnosed with, diabetes, pancreatitis, Hashimoto's disease, hypothyroidism, and a syndrome called autonomic, autonomic dysrexia. I don't I think if I said that correctly, had been resolved. He's used the word resolved instead of healed because health requires maintenance. And when people think of themselves as healed, they often return to disharmonious habits that created the illness. It's always fascinating to talk to somebody that heals themselves, but RJ has taken it to another level. He was paralyzed from the chest down. Imagine putting yourself in that state and then healing yourself. And really, RJ's story tells us that whatever you're going through, you can overcome it. All things are possible. So welcome to the Reality Revolution, RJ. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. So you were obviously inspired to write your book after your profound journey. Tell everybody a little bit more about your story and what inspired you to write this book and, and what you learned in this process. Uh, well, the, uh, it's kind of interesting, the writing of the book and, and working with people, uh, it never actually was my intention, believe it or not. Um, <clears throat> when, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was in the hospital rehab for a couple of months, uh, the only guest I had was a, um, a Chinese medicine expert. And uh, he was coming to see me and he was, he was doing, he wrote the forward for the book, by the way. Mm -hmm. So he was coming to see me and he was witnessing what he, you know, and, and even says in the forward, if he didn't witness it himself, he never would have believed any of this was possible. So I was explaining what it is that I was going to do. And he was literally watching me do it. And as he was working on me, I would be able to relay to him what was actually happening as he was working on me. And it was from that perspective that I think it, it kind of changed his outlook. And he'd been doing this for 27 years and has treated over 75,000 people over the course of his life. And he said, this was a complete confirmation of everything he ever thought. And also it opened the door to things that he just always wondered about. And as he saw me putting myself back together, literally, he actually asked me, he said, would you, would you start teaching all of my, uh, my clients and my patients meditation? And I said, yeah, sure. I'll absolutely do that. And he said, no, please, you have to help them. Mm -hmm. And the way that he said it, I'll never forget it. And at that moment, I realized that my, my life was going to change even besides overcoming paralysis. And so as soon as I got out um, and I was still, I could walk, but I certainly wasn't sprinting. But uh, when I got out, I still had some more recovery to do, but I immediately started teaching. I was going to his clinic on the weekends and uh, teaching meditation and showing people what it is that I understood about metaphysics through my own self-realization or enlightenment in terms of what had happened. And uh, I just started working with people to the point where I had a busy schedule 
working with people, doing healings on them, teaching them metaphysics. And then it was like, you know, please write a book. You need to write a book about all of this. So I, none of this was planned uh, at all. I knew I would walk. I understand the metaphysics of self-healing and self-realization. It's a repeatable, robust process that anybody can do once you understand the metaphysics. But the, the writing of the book and doing, doing these kind of things wasn't planned. It was, I was asked, I felt that this was a way that I could be of service. And, uh, and so I wrote the book and, and here we are today. Well, thank goodness. I, I can just tell from reading the book, um, there's so much unique information. I've read a lot of, of healing books, but this has applicable exercises and a way of understanding the healing process. You give seven steps that are very helpful. So if you're if you're out there and you're, I don't know what to do, I, I believe the concept that I can heal myself, but what do I do? This is really a great place to start. Uh, because you've kind of outlined an easy because for some people they oh it's too complicated or I'm not a good meditator like that person right and you make me believe in this book anybody can do this right yeah well it's true it's absolutely true because the the the, the physics are the same self-healing mm -hmm. is just metaphysics it's just a deeper set of physics that the the our five senses mm -hmm. will never ever uh, give us access to the one true concrete reality and so it, do, it does take a, a higher mind to be able to open up the door to this information. But you're absolutely right. It's just, it's just metaphysics. Anyone can do it. Someone just had to do it first, I guess, and now can explain it. And then that gives uh, permission for everyone else to do it. I would say where for everyone to start, the mm -hmm. first thing to understand is that all the energy that we use, and we use energy for everything. We use energy to think, to emote, to animate our body and to create experiences, okay? It is our most precious resource, mm -hmm. is our energy. Now, all we're going to be doing in this book is that we're no longer gonna squander our energy, our life force, our power in thinking and emoting and doing in a way that doesn't yield results. We're going to harness it with a single pointedness of focus and apply that towards self-healing through the, through the exercises and protocols. Mm -hmm. Everyone has energy to use. It's what we use all day long for everything. The book is simply going to show you how to use it properly for your own self-healing. And the other, the other place, that's the foundation. The other thing to understand in terms of meditation, meditation or non-thought is our natural state. Mm -hmm. Thinking and emoting is not our natural state at all. It's become our uh, default setting, that's for sure, but it is not our natural state. And one of the things that I, when I spoke about first starting to teach meditation, I kind of couldn't believe the, um, the difficulty that everyone has in meditating. It's like, RJ, I tried and tried and tried and I, and I can't do it. I just can't do it. Well, as you pointed out, the book has what I call magic tricks that work in literally one second and it, anyone can meditate. And I'll, 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 we'll do one of the magic tricks right now. If there's anyone who's listening or watching, who has trouble meditating, it's the easiest thing in the world. Just simply pretend that your eyes, your physical eyes, are simply floating in space with no brain attached. I love that, yeah. You can't- it's Very powerful. Yeah, you can't think. Now, just for one moment, just look at the paradigm shift in one second. Most people, I can't meditate. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, they've tried, and they have, they've tried everything diligently, right? They get their incense, they get their crystals, they get their, they're listening to whatever, right? And then they still can't do it. Okay. Now anyone can meditate effortlessly, effortlessly in one second. We went from not being able to meditate to not even being able to think. And yeah. that's, that's part of the paradigm shift that's, that's captured in the book. The, uh, the beginning of the book, um, you did something that was, you know, with all the books I read, it's, it was amazing. Um, you know, we struggle with the ego. And um, in, in, in my own mind, I would realized I'd made this a struggle that it was hard for me to overcome my ego. And you make it very simple. Oh, it's very simple for you to overcome your ego. I wanted you to talk about that. I mean, that's the first real, before the steps, you, you kind of discriminate and help me to understand the true reality and my own ego and how those, that interplay. And you make it pretty simple for me to just kind of release my ego. Yeah, that's, uh, that's essential. 
because the, the ego mind, I call it the ego mind identity or the EMI. Mm -hmm. And so in the past, it's just been called the ego or false self or shadow self or uh, slave self, a whole bunch of different terms, right? So for me, a more accurate description and understanding mm -hmm. is the ego mind identity. And essentially the ego mind identity is the human character that we create based upon the identifications that we make once we're here. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we start saying whether it's a religious belief or uh, a, the idea of success is money or what, it, what it, or a role that we play, we start saying, I'm a this, I'm a that. I'm a this, I'm a that. Okay, you're not. N no one of those things. We are the awareness of those things. We, are, we, we cannot be the thing that we are aware of because we're the awareness. So we create a human character, which is essentially a lie. Mm -hmm. And that misprogramming through identifying, I'm a this, I'm a that. We keep sending the wrong message through our mind and the body must have the tangible experience of whatever conceptualized reality we create. So we keep throwing ourselves out of balance. None of these things here have anything to do with us. We simply slide into this body and we slide out. Now, when we slide in and we don't form any identifications, ego, mind, identity, the body naturally runs its program of self-healing. Naturally, you get a cut, it scabs over. Mm -hmm. Now, we have stopped that program on the deeper levels because of the identity that we've created and on all the information that we're identifying with. We never actually let our body do what, it's, what it naturally does. We're certainly not aiding in it either through meditation. So we just have to start to recognize that this human character we create is just that. It's a character. When we watch a movie, we know those characters aren't real. We know this. And neither is yours. It's just as fake. It's just as made up. It's just a story that you tell yourself based upon your identifications. If you don't identify with anything, you'll start to realize, like just like I said, two eyes floating in space with no brain attached. You'll realize you're none of these identifications. You never have been. And the more that we think in this way, the more disharmony we're creating for ourselves. So the key is to realize the truth that you're none of these things, that you slide into this body and you're gonna slide out. You're pure awareness of everything. You're not what you are aware of. Right? We pick up our phone and we look at our phone. We don't think that we are our phone. Right? right? So our awareness is what we really are. You can think of it as soul, spirit, consciousness. It goes much deeper than that. But you can think of yourself as that. Pure awareness, untouched by everything. Just like the sun, no matter how bad the weather is, clouds, rain, sleet, snow, tornado, hurricane, none of that touches the sun. It never touches the sun. Nothing here touches you. You are untouchable. You are that pure. You are that clean. You are that unscathed. And the only problem is that we're making identifications, false identifications. That throws the body out of whack. And that's how we form the ego mind identity. And as soon as you stop packing on to yourself, just like when you have a computer, you keep downloading more and more programs, the computer doesn't run that well anymore. Right. In the beginning, it was fast, it was efficient, it was clean. And the more stuff you download, the more identifications you make, the more your body-mind complex starts to break down because none of it's germane to you. None of it. Right. So when we start to work in that way, sickness and disease is a subset of your ego-mind identity. It's the character that has that problem. It's the character that's sick. What you are is the sun. It's untouched completely. And when you start to work in that way, you can do anything. So that's really the first step that you talk about is finding your true essence. And that it, it, we have to go through this process of, of unidentifying and removing that baggage that we're carrying around. One of the great exercises you have carrying, you know, imagining you're carrying groceries and how heavy it is, and then just putting them down. It's, it's a simple thought, but that's what we're doing with all these identities. We're not the drummer when we say that we are. So it's, uh, it's a powerful first step. Now, 
do you struggle when, with older clients? Is it, is it age related? If I've lived for 70 years, I have a lot of programs running in my computer. That means it's going to a lot that I need to remove. Is, is there, is, is it possible that I reach a threshold where it's, I just have too many programs running or can anybody heal? Is there a quick shortcut to just delete the whole thing? You know, a shortcut button on the computer where I can just delete all those programs. The, the shortcut is surrender. Right. That is the shortcut. And you, you alluded to one of the exercises, which is put the groceries down. Right. Right. Anyone, it only takes one breath to completely heal yourself and actually achieve enlightenment or self-realization. Mm -hmm. And I mean that. Now, that level of surrender <laughs> is very rare. Okay. Right. We actually have to learn to use our will to let go which sounds like an oxymoron because when we think of the will, our energy, our will, as a human being, we typically associate it with fighting, with overcoming something, some kind of challenge where we have to fight and summon our will. And often that's absolutely true without a doubt. But at certain points in our evolution, the highest use of the will is to summon your energy to completely surrender. That opens the door it's the surrender. So it doesn't matter how many programs we've added to our computer, or how many identifications that we've made. There's all those little shortcut magic tricks. When you ask, who am I? Mm -hmm. There's no answer, right? Because your character is made up. It's not really you. There's all these little shortcuts to get us to the point, to the starting line, where we can begin actually self-healing and actually experience tangible self-realization or enlightenment. And one of the, the, my favorite chapters is when you broke down the, the four directions of consciousness, which is related to when you're talking about will. I had never really considered it in that way. Um, you identify reason, emotions and feelings, faith and will. And each of those play a role in, in the way we create and identify and use these energies, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, a, a soul always has a, a preferred method in which it likes to uh, operate. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do, and there's questions that you ask yourself on the book, because some of us might not know uh, how we get our best results. So, but it's always one of those four or a combination right. of those four. And, and it always is, because it really can't be anything else. So once we understand, just by asking the simple questions that are in the book, once we understand which way we like to operate, which way we get our best results, then we simply use that to our advantage. If someone is very, we'll say willful, right? We're gonna kind of lean on the will as, as the uh, accelerant for all of the other aspects within the self-healing technique. If it's, if it's the intellect or reason, mm -hmm. there's information in the book that literally proves why self-healing is an actual fact about how many cells are reborn. You get a new kidney after X amount of days, every every cell within your, within your lungs is renewed after about five months. Self-healing is a fact. It's a fact. It's how things work. We keep misprogramming ourselves just by like downloading more and more information on a computer. We keep misidentifying this perfection with all this information. And all it does is throw us out of whack. We can harness ourselves by using any one of those four directions of consciousness and if we know how we get our best result, then that's exactly what we're going to lean on to make sure we get our best results in terms of self-healing. And everybody's going to be a little different. Yeah, yeah. There, it could be a combination too. So right. uh, personally, uh, the will and faith uh, for me is what I rely much more on mm -hmm. than, the, than reasoning or the intellect or emotions or feelings. But everyone is different and they're all just as valid as the next one. Right. But all of us have a preference. We might not realize it. Mm -hmm. We might not realize how we get our best results. But once, once you do that by asking yourself those questions, we're going to use your greatest talents uh, in your favor to help achieve the self-healing. So we've gone through the process of, of releasing these programs and we've identified our true essence. So the next step is knowing specifically what you're going to achieve, which is an important step. You've re you're in that level of awareness. You still have maybe this, the, the, the sickness in your body. So you identify and create an intention. I need to specifically heal this particular thing, right? 
Ab absolutely. So the whole key about that is the more specific we are, the more of our entire higher mind and our body of energy we can bring to one single point. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're bringing all of our energy, all of our attention, all of our focus and all of our mind to one single thing, that one single thing has a far greater chance of coming to fruition or manifesting than if we were completely unspecific. If it was just like, oh, I just wanna get better. How do you focus on the, the, the statement, I just wanna get better? It's clearly, not specific enough. So what I discovered is that the more specific that we are, the more of our entire body of energy and higher mind we can bring to that one thing. And if we're bringing all of that energy, all of that focus, all of that attention to that one thing, that one thing has a far greater chance of coming into manifestation because it's completely focused. I call it single pointedness of purpose. It's a higher level of concentration. And all we have to do is identify what it is that we're trying to achieve. And again, well, I'll just use myself as an example. I wanted to walk. So that was, even though I had a host of other, other things, right. but I wanted to walk. So my focus was my spine and healing my spine and bringing the nerves back to life down my leg. So I brought an incredible amount of attention, energy, and focus, single pointedness of focus directed at my spine and then I would carry that down the nerves down to my legs. Being that specific, you have a far greater chance of making it happen. Even with the Hashimoto's and the other stuff going, you just focused on that one, one thing at a time? Is that what you recommend? That was the main focus for me. Right. Now, what, what I found is that as I was doing the other steps that are in the book, mm -hmm. like one of them is called channeling intelligent energy in through your crown chakra into your body. Right. As I'm doing that with the focus, the, the single pointness, the focus on my spine, the energy was coming into my body. So my whole body was getting the benefit. Right. Now I was focusing obviously on my spine because I, I wanted to walk, but it's kind of like you know pouring something into a glass of water. Once you pour into the glass of water, the whole water gets infused with what you just put into the water. It doesn't just stay in this one little location. Mm -hmm. So my whole body was getting the repair by doing those exercises, but I started out with a single pointedness of focus for paralysis. Someone could be, it could be lung cancer, it could be diabetes, whatever it is. But as you're doing some of these exercises, there's an, the benefit is enormous because like I said, you're literally flooding your physical body. And by the way, your subtle, your more subtle bodies of energy that the physical eyes don't see, but the higher mind can see it. Mm -hmm. You're also flooding those systems with higher frequency healing energy. So everything is getting repaired simultaneously even when you're focusing on just one thing. So then we move to the next step, which is activating your healing intention. And that's different than this, the, the first step, that single focus. In this, you're, you're creating the intention to heal. Explain that step a little bit. So yeah, move... yeah th this is, I mean, every one of these steps are important. Now right. I'm, gonna pre I'm gonna preface this one uh, because I make no bones about it. Okay, I do magic. Uh, and I don't mean magic uh, with a C like three card Monty. I'm not talking about that kind of magic. I'm talking about magic with a CK. Right. Now, magic with a CK is metaphysics. So let's let's, you know, get All rid of, of any kind. Yeah, let's not get rid of it any weird sort of connotation. Magic is metaphysics. Magic mm -hmm. is accessing the energies that lie outside of physical sensory perception. Okay? That's also what metaphysics is, right? Okay. So mm -hmm. Again, I make no bones about it. I do high level magic, which I understand metaphysics. Now that one step that you're talking about, that's how you do magic. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we look at a human being, <clears throat> it has four ways of expressing itself. Now, uh, and believe it or not, if we were on a higher frequency, we'd have more than four ways, but we do not. So right now we have four ways of being able to express ourselves: mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, verbally, and physically. Mentally, emotionally, verbally, physically. That's it. Mm -hmm. Those are the four fundamental ways a human being can express itself. Okay. To activate your full healing intention, we're going to use all four of those things simultaneously and unify them. So the, the most powerful way that we can ever express ourselves is to take all four of those things and do them at once, right? Mm -hmm. So what it looks like, so to speak, 
imagine yourself. I used to picture myself snorkeling uh, because I was at peak health and kicking my legs and you know all that kind of thing. So I would imagine seeing myself again snorkeling. Okay, the next step. So there's there's mentally the next step was I would remember what it felt like mm -hmm. to be able to do that. I would make because it's a muscle memory. Right, your your right. biography becomes your biology. So I knew that if I could make my cells, my nerves, my muscles remember what it felt like, literally, I would be bringing the life force back into them because I'm making them remember what it felt like to snorkel. So that was the second aspect. So we have mental, we have that emotional connection, tangibly what it felt like to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Then the third part was verbalization. Most of us know that uh, affirmations and mantras, I mean, people have been doing them for thousands of years that, because they work, mm -hmm. right? So what I would do is a command. So I would give myself a command, uh, something along the lines of, I bring life force energy through my spine and into my legs now. Okay, and I, when I would say it, I meant it. I connected with every word, which is also the key to a mantra and affirmation. A command is even more important. So we have the mentalization, tangibly remembering what it felt like. Mm -hmm. We give ourselves a verbal command. And the only thing that left, the only thing that is left in terms of expressing ourselves as human being is physicality. Now, <clears throat> I was paralyzed from the chest down, so there wasn't a lot of physicality I had at my disposal. But I could move my hands and my arms. Mm -hmm. So all I did was I gave myself a gesture. And for me, it was almost like just waving my hands or making a fist like this. So I would combine those four things. I would see it in my mind's eye. I would tangibly remember what it feels like. I would give myself a command and I would move my hands like this. And I would combine those things into one thing. That is all of yourself being harnessed towards one thing. That is the full activation of our healing intention. And that is how you do magic. Beautiful. I absolutely love that. So then we, we've we done that. We've done this process. We move to the fourth step, command creator consciousness. So you're moving to, you're, you're as you say, you're moving through frequency. You're moving to another level of consciousness at this point. You're not in, you're, it's beyond what you just stated. Uh, it's that creator consciousness. Touch on what you meant by that and, and how you experienced it so that people that are in that step can understand that. Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. Okay. Uh, I like to say that the, the higher consciousness is the architect of our form and the chemist of our biology. Okay, you can almost think of when we say created in God's image. Okay, so, and we can see the relation between those two statements. I just say it metaphysically. Okay, so really through higher consciousness, higher states of existence, getting closer and closer to the, to the divine, if you like, we are now approaching where a human being was originally designed. Right. We're actually approaching the frequency, the dimension, the level of consciousness where form and function is actually put together. Okay. So really think about what I just said. Now that, <clears throat> excuse me, that step command creator consciousness is meditation. And it's a meditation that's, I, from my understanding is unlike anything that's, that's taught within this realm. So you're able to, through the metaphor of a spaceship, you're able to take off in your own personalized spaceship and you're literally going up, up, up into space, up into space, and you're actually even going further. You're actually leaving this frequency. You're leaving this density. You're mm -hmm. going into a different state of consciousness and then you keep going and going and going and going and going and so on and so on. So you'll get to a, a point where there's almost no more association at all with your physical form. You will start to realize what you really are which is just this expanded consciousness, a direct fractal of God. So we're putting ourselves at what I call the etch-a-sketch level, which is where form and function is put together. Right. So the key to that step is to go to the etch-a-sketch level and literally put yourself back together at that blueprint, at that etch-a-sketch level, where form and function is actually materialized based upon your intention. And that was one of the things I did because my spine was permanently 
paralyzed. There was no way for my spine to get better. Well, that's not true. When you have a different understanding and you do different things, you get different results. So I went to a completely different state of consciousness. And at that level, what you do at that level at the higher frequencies informs the lower frequencies. Just like what you imagine and believe you end up taking physical action on, it's the same understanding. So whatever you're doing at these, this, these higher frequencies and higher dimensions, it's going to inform and infuse your physical body. Just like your beliefs and thoughts dictate your behavior. It's the same thing, right. except, we're, except we're going way, way beyond you know, thoughts, and, uh, thoughts and behavior and emotions. We're going way beyond it. But command creator consciousness is your, your gateway to be able to put yourself back together in exactly how, how it is that you wish to do it. And it's a very simple meditation. The whole book is really a form of meditation, really. It is, yeah. It, it's a simple meditation that just unlocks your potential to put yourself back together in the way that you see fit. So you're entering into a state. You're, you're, you are the creator. You are the creator. And that's really where it comes from. Once you've entered into that state, you are, the, you are God. You are the creator. And when you have that power, anything's possible. And it's a beautiful part of this process. And we've only reached the fourth step. There's three more steps. And my, my favorite chapter, because it resonates with the law of one and my understanding of energy, mm. is channeling intelligent energy into the body. Um, we have access to energies all the time. But when we can reach the point where we can program the energy specifically, that's, that's the key. That's the real thing that changes the lock. A lot of people can do the, those other steps and what's going on. And they're not programming the energy. The energy is a living, intelligent energy that we can program. So talk to me what you meant when, when you started to go into that step of programming the energy. Yeah, exactly. Exa well said. Exactly. So uh, just a, a quick sort of uh, metaphysical biology lesson. So the chakra system, for anyone who's not familiar with the chakra system, the chakra system uh, are energy transformers or energy metabolizers that our five physical senses can't see, but they're actually what keeps our form and function going when we're incarnate. We think it's food, but it's not. It's I not. promise. It's not food. It's, if you think of yourself as a physical being, you have to eat. If you see yourself and know yourself as an energetic being, you can fast for days, weeks. And I've done that. It's in the book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the chakra system is is really the most important system within it, it it gives life to our actual body itself and it's higher templates of understanding that give us our form and function so what we want to do is go to the highest chakra that is associated with the physical form that is our crown chakra so by opening up our crown chakra and there's very simple exercises about your finger and then reaching out from inside to touch your finger you can do that with any single chakra if you need to open your chakra or clear all those out so what you do is you open up your crown chakra and when you do it properly, you'll know it because you can feel it. And my analogy, and it's just an analogy, but my analogy is like when you wear a baseball cap for a while and then you take it off, that kind of feeling that you get when you first take off the, the baseball cap, mm -hmm. it's not exactly like that, but it's a little bit like that. When you're opening up your crown chakra, you're literally going to feel like the top of your head has been lifted off or someone removed your skull cap. Right. So now we're we are going to be able to bring in the energy that is vibrating, that is already programmed to heal lower, lower frequencies. The higher frequencies automatically harmonize and heal. Higher frequencies heal lower frequencies, just like when there's a bunch of angry people and someone calm walks in. Right. The whole room starts to calm down. OK, so your body, if it's full of disharmony, what you need to do is bring in higher frequency energy because it automatically harmonizes and heals it. So the easiest way and one of the most effective ways of doing it is opening up your crown chakra, then commanding the energy and the visual that I give people is imagine a waterfall standing underneath a waterfall. You open up your crown and you just imagine that waterfall of energy cascading down and imagine what it feels like that all that energy cascading down into your open crown chakra and that completely floods your entire body and your body of energy. Now, at, at this point, whatever disharmony or Ill, Ill health that you're experiencing, you can pour as much high frequency energy as you want into it. And it's kind of instantaneous how different you feel. People that the first time they do it, they kind of can't believe how tangible 
the differences immediately. So channeling intelligent energy is one of the most effective and in a funny way, fun way of healing. And I can't, I can't, and it's, it's in, it's one of the steps in the healing technique and it's something that I found myself doing. And that's what that entire ascend the frequency healing technique technique is. Mm -hmm. These are all the things that I just remembered. It all came back to me and channeling intelligent energy is one of the most important ones. So each of the chakras are sort of just a, a little bit a small, a less intense version of that crown energy. That's where it's most intense. That's why I get what you're saying. If you can focus on that, you're getting the purest, most um, powerful, that is easiest to program. You, you got it. That's it. Right. That is 100% right. And the beauty of all of these steps that we're talking about, there's no limit. No limit. To how to how often or how much you can do it because it's all forms of we'll call it meditation. You're not going right. to like exhaust yourself. It's not like you got to go run a triathlon or go lift weight. It's the opposite. And the reason why it, it the reason why it works this way is because we're working with the truth. With the truth. And yeah. that's why it's so powerful. It's so effective, and it's and it's it's immediate. You're working with the truth. There's no reason. Oh, I can only do this for two minutes. I'm going to get tired. Nonsense. Nonsense. You could do this all day. And in fact, I'm here to tell you, that's actually part of why I got, I got better. I never stopped doing these you things. You sit and I, do it for hours and hours on end, right? Every day. Well, right. I, well, first off, where was I going? I was paralyzed, right? right? I wasn't, it wasn't going anywhere. But you had that benefit. It probably helped, right? Yeah, it was yeah. an I advantage was, to you in that moment. Literally, I used it to my advantage. All I right. did was work on myself, work on myself, work on myself. And then lo and behold, I can walk just as I knew that I would. So then we, we, using that energy, we move to the, the sixth step, which is turning off the program of illness. As we talked about earlier, it's a program that's running related to the ego. So we have this access to this energy. Um, so what, how would, do you recommend if I, if I have that, I, you know, I, I, I get stomach aches when I get nervous and I want to turn off this program. I have the energy I've, I've let go of in that perfect effortless awareness. How do I go about programming it to turn off that program of illness? Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So uh, <clears throat> the image that I use is once you're in that state, just as you talked about, right? Mm -hmm. you, you're, in a, uh, you're in a state of clarity. Mm -hmm. You could also call that meditation. Okay. So what you can do is you can do it with your eyes closed. You can do it with your eyes open. Either way. So all I want you to do is to sort of like imagine uh, a bunch of neon signs. Okay. And each neon sign is lit up with whatever program that you're running diabetes, heart disease, cancer, fibromyalgia, anxiety. It, it doesn't matter what it is. Right. But all I want you to do is see it, see it lit up in your mind's eye. Okay. Now the analogy is if we have a light plugged into the wall, okay. Mm -hmm. It's plugged into the wall because it needs an energy source, right? If we unplug the light, the lamp, I say, the lamp from the wall, it's, it's not going to turn on, right? It needs an energy source. Okay. Your character, your ego mind identity is the energy source for the program that it's running of illness. Okay. So that's the analogy. So when you have the, the neon sign lit up and you see which ones you're running, unplug them. Unplug them just like you would unplug a, a lamp from a wall. Now, on top of that, when you have a light switch and you flip, you flip the light on and off, mm -hmm. on and off, same thing, you're cutting off the power, turn it off completely. Unplug it. Now flip the light off. Mm -hmm. So now it's unplugged. Now it's flipped off. And now the next thing I want you to do is just like the electrical cord from the wall to the lamp, cut it. So I can't replug it back in. It can never go back <laughs> on again. Now it's impossible. Right. You've, you've unplugged it, you've turned it off, and you severed the cord. Beautiful. So that's how, you, that's how you turn off the program of illness. Perfect. So then the final step that you have is using the power of the spoken word. Um, so you, 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 you've gone through that. You start to heal in that moment. And it really, that, that last step is how to maintain and continue in that health um, Am I right? I mean, that it's continue with that programs because um, you, you wake up the next day, you're still being programmed. You still have things going on and it kind of gives you some guidance on how to continue in that, in that state accessed perfectly with this, this light and program. And so you recommend using the power of the spoken word. 
Ab absolutely. So the, the, the power of the spoken word has been used for centuries by healers. And if, if, and if you think about it, the, the, the meaning of words come from the vibratory vo uh, voice or the vibration of the voice spoken and the changes that, that it affects upon the energy in the ether is what gave meaning to words. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very important to actually understand. And that's also why we spell words because every word that we say is creating an energetic spell upon the energy and the ethers of the world. So that's how that really works. Make no mistake about it. So the, the voice or the words that we say to ourself, the commands, the mantras, the affirmations have the biggest impact on our body of energy and our more subtle bodies. Just like we talked about when you say something, the effect that it has upon the ethers, how we get the meaning of words. So by using the spoken word, this is why people do mantras and affirmations. It changes their programming. It changes their frequency. It changes their vibration. So by using the power of the spoken word, and my, I like commands personally, because commands are how you do magic. So I like commands. So in the book, there's all different commands based upon uh, whether you like to use emotions and feelings for your healing, where you like to use mm -hmm. reason for your healing, you like to use faith for your healing, or you like to use the will for your healing. So I literally give the power of the spoken word. There's commands and mantras that you can do. And when you do them and you literally connect with the words that you're saying, it is absolutely tangible because just like I said, the meaning of words are the effect that it has upon the ether. That specific vibration of the word changes the energies. That's how we got the meaning of words. So you're changing your energy. You're changing the makeup of your energies based upon the words that you say, the self-talk inside your head, the commands that you give yourself, the mantras, and the affirmations that you give yourself are literally changing the energies of your physical body and your more subtle bodies. The power of the spoken word should never, ever be underutilized and it needs to be respected because it is an unbelievable way to empower yourself. And now we can use it for self-healing specifically. And it's such a simple system and it makes so much sense and you make it so accessible. And that's what I, what I enjoyed about it, but really it goes beyond just healing. I, I think that we can take what you've taught here and I can use it to apply to any part of my life. I can, if I, I can use it to find prosperity and love and all kinds of things by, by programming these energies and maintaining the spoken word and using the different techniques that you recommend. Yeah, absolutely. The book, <clears throat> the, the truth is the truth. The truth is the truth. And it just applies to everything. Right. Okay. Wisdom is timeless. It's always applicable under any circumstance and within any context. And so fortunately, that's what we're working with when we work with this, with this book and these understandings. And I make no bones about it. This book is a lightning bolt from God. And that's not an exaggeration. Mm -mm. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. It is the truth from up on high. I'm the messenger if you want to see me that way, channeling it. If you want to see it, that's fine that way. These teachings, these understandings, these protocols are the truth. And you're absolutely right. They work for everything. Just as many people come to me, <clears throat> excuse me, for help with their personal life, help with their business, help with how to navigate their life, not so much healing. Mm -hmm. Lots of people come to me for healing, and I make them no, without a doubt. But lots of people come to me just for what you said. They want to learn how to apply the truth in terms of manifesting the life that they know is within them, how to live and behave authentically without the ego mind identity, without the societal programming, without all the limitations, by not withholding your own love, by not with withholding your own wisdom, and by realizing how powerful we all are. What I did with myself is a drop in the bucket. Everyone is going to be able to do this. We just needed a reminder. Mm -hmm. That's all. And we needed a, a tangible example, right? Here I am, not paralyzed, walking around. Everyone is going to do this. Everyone. And I got news for you. Everyone used to do this. Everyone, everyone used to do it. Everyone used to operate this way. And that's why everyone feels deep down inside, they can heal themselves. Just ask people. I know I, know I can get better. I can do it. But they might not know how because they haven't been taught properly, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But people like, no, I can get better. I know I can get better. I feel it. I know it. I know it. That's because you've done it before. That's why. As a little kid, I used to say, if I ever get sick, I'll just heal myself. Right. So I knew the remembering was in me. Now, I needed a, a quote unquote catastrophe to bring it out so I could then access what I deeply know. And so I gave myself paralysis. My last name, Spina, means spine. So this was all planned out. This was absolutely my life plan. Exactly. When I, that was what I was thinking. Did he change his name? <laughs> I was like, did, did he change his name? Because it's too on the mark, right? <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, literally at a certain point in our own evolution, in our own consciousness, we can actually access our life plan. Right. And upon my own self-realization or enlightenment, or whatever word you want to use, I don't really care, is when I started to get access to all of these things. And I, it was rather obvious because I could literally see it that this, I mapped this out. Literally, I mapped this out. Mm -hmm. I gave myself a body that was, or I incarnated into a body, I should say, that was prone to certain kind of things that would eventually lead to sepsis and paralysis. My last name is Spina, which actually means <laughs> spine. And right. some of this, some of this, I remembered as a kid, because I, I can't remember if we, I can't remember if they made me take this out of the book or not, to be honest. I did at one point have in the book, a conversation I had with my mom when I was a little kid. And I explained to my mom that I created this whole life. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I mapped it all out. I know where I'm going to live. I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm here to teach. I know what I'm here to explain. She's like, what are you talking about? I said, because I remember it. I remember everything. And oh, if wow. I ever get and if I ever get sick, I'll just heal myself. So it's we do this. All of us do this. It's not just RJ. Mm -hmm. All of us do this. I I just happen to remember. That's all. Amazing. So considering the power of this magic, you look back at magical traditions in the past. We've made magic so complicated. We've made the we've made these complicated rituals and archetypes and, and, and using different languages and um, herbs and, 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 and it's, it's all just, just been ways to make it more complicated when it's always so simple. It's right there. The easiest magic and the most powerful is the most simple, like, like you've shown us. Yeah. By the way, that, that's uh, a brilliant observation and speaks to the own level of sentience that you're operating with. That's absolutely right. Now, what, what we're talking about when things being this simple and this powerful, from my understanding, we're talking about aspects of self-mastery. This is mm -hmm. actual mastery over the mind-body complex. Now, at the, at the highest levels, it's metaphysics or what we call pure magic. Mm -hmm. Now, dependent upon the practitioner, shall we say, and their level of sentience, they're either going to operate in the highest way, so to speak, or they're going to operate exactly where they're at, which is fine. And that's where we start to get all these different herbs and spells. They have efficacy. There's no right. doubt about that. They have right. efficacy. They absolutely do. They're, they're kind of on their way to self-mastery, if that makes sense. They're working right. their way towards self-mastery because anytime we use a physical interface, herb, tincture, crystal, crystal vaccine, anytime we use a physical interface, we are limited or limiting ourselves to the energies associated with the physical interface. Mm -hmm. So that in and of itself speaks to non self mastery. So you're going to limit yourself anytime you use anything. Now the self, the true self, the higher self has no limitation, no limitation, none. And when you start to work authentically with your higher self, with your higher mind, you're now operating with, uh, with aspects of self mastery and putting your body back together a destroyed, ravaged body is an aspect of self-mastery, which anyone can do once they learn the proper protocols and teachings. And that's that's what the book is for. So I can see sprinkled throughout your book um, and also ascending the frequencies. Um, I, I, I would love to get your perspective. I spend a lot of my um, a lot of episodes just pondering what the next level of consciousness is about, reading what other people channel about it, what other people discuss, talking about visions I have of it. So obviously I know because of the words that you've used that you've also contemplated what this next level is. What do you think is happening on the planet? What do you think the next level of consciousness? Of course, we can't totally explain it because it would be beyond our own senses to explain, but let's just talk about it because it's fun. What do you think is gonna happen in this new earth, fourth density perspective? 
what is it going to be like if we were to describe it like an author? Okay, that's that's a great question. All right, so let me let me start with a because as you said, if we don't have a tangible frame of reference, it's kind of hard to 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 make this. Oh, that makes sense, RJ, because it's like a, there's no frame of reference for it. Okay, right. so and that's part of why I like using analogies. So and the sillier the analogy, the better, because I like to joke around anyway. So okay. This is a, a way to look at what it looks like as we, if we moved up an entire frequency. Uh, and let me first say, we are not, from my, from my understanding, we are not in the third dimension. We are in the third frequency. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. En energy exists frequentially, not dimensionally. Dimensions house frequencies. Right. And they're a, they're a unit of measure, like height, weight, and width. So it is my direct understanding that we are in the third frequency of the first full dimension. And the first full dimension is all physicality. The entire physical universe operates within the first full dimension. Anything outside of the first full dimension, we would have no frame of reference for it because there's no, uh, there's no solidity to anything. It is such a fluid sort of ethereal uh realm and there's 12 dimensions by the way and we're only in the first one right that there it's very difficult to give a frame of reference until you experience it for yourself now that being said moving to what people call the fourth dimension or the fourth density that's fine it's a fourth frequency from my understanding right but we're saying the same thing we're saying the same thing okay so imagine being underwater okay and you got your uh your diving suit on right okay you're all the way underwater. You got a fake suit on, right? Because you need it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to survive being all the way down underwater, deep underwater. Okay. Now, when you're all the way down there, you can't move very well. Can't see very well. You can't hear very well. Very limited mobility, very limited functionality, very limited understanding of things. Because you just right. can't operate that well when you're all the way down there. Okay. Now, imagine what it's like when you go back up on land. Okay. First off, you can take that suit off. You don't need it, right? Okay. Right. You can see better, much better, hear much better. You understand faster, quicker, because the environment is more holistic because your functionality and mobility has greatly increased, right? Mm -hmm. Totally different access to information and how much faster you can understand everything, move around. Your functionality is greatly increased. That's what it's like from going where we are right now when we go into what people call the fourth dimension or the fourth frequency, right. we can call it the fourth, it's fine. That's what it's gonna be like. It's that pronounced, it's that profound. Our understanding of ourselves will be completely different. And we talk about that suit that you shed once you go up on land. The suit that we're gonna be shedding is the ego mind identity. Mm -hmm. The fake character we're going to be shedding upon the fourth frequency. That's the beginning of it. It's the beginning of true self-realization by, by getting rid of that. Our understanding, our mobility, our functionality, we're going to have access to so much more information. We're going to have access to other beings that are existing in higher frequencies. We're going to start to be re reminded and we're going to learn more about who and what we really are. We're going to start operating in a completely different way. Think about how you operate when you're on the bottom, you're on the bottom of the water with that suit, can't see, can't hear, can't move. Think about how you operate. Then think about how you operate when you get on land. Totally different. Totally different. Totally different. That's the difference from just one full frequency. That's it is so different. It's beyond, from my perspective, it's beyond caveman to Star Trek. Right. It's past that. I love that analogy. It's past it's amazing. That. Yeah. Yes. And that's that's what's going to happen. Absolutely. So what would be the reason we're moving through these frequencies? Why can't we just go to that, the last frequency? Why are we moving through these frequencies in the way that we are? There, there are, everything is an experience, okay? And that is really the point of existence itself, to know itself and all its infinite potential. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you have to have every kind of experience that is possible. And so we are simply having a low frequency experience. So mm -hmm. that's why we're having this because it's available to us. There are things that we can learn through this experience, plain and simple. God welcomes all experience. And God is learning. If, if, by, by what you're saying, the amazing part to think about is that God is evolving and learning. 
God doesn't, God is still expanding, right? Which is an amazing thing to think about. Yeah, the, the very humanistic misperception, misunderstanding, and misidentification of God being like this old man with a white beard. No, not, not at all, right? Uh, right. <laughs> God, we are inside of God. Right. Okay. And God created, I'll, I'll, I'll give a, a visual if this is helpful. And this is through my direct experience, this stuff. Right. Okay. So <clears throat> let's use a human image just because it's easier, right? So we'll use a human image. Okay. So now, and, and I just said God's not an old man with a beard, but now let's pretend that God is an old man right. with a beard. <laughs> okay. So, because it's just something for the mind to work with. All right. But now let's pretend that from the waist down, okay, God hollowed himself out nothing there okay at like a, like a balloon just no, nothing inside right mm -hmm. now up up top is all pure god right down below he hollowed himself out and he made a creation he actually built something within his lower half that's called the multiverse okay he literally built an environment and it is the multiverse and within that environment are creations creations of creations and the creations of the creations of the creations and so on and so on and so on and so on. Now God is learning about what's in his, what's what he is, his bottom half through his creations. God is literally learning about itself, not a him, itself through the creations that it made within himself so he could understand himself better. To, to make himself into that kind of minutia, to understand the intricacies of itself is the whole point of the multiverse. So we can understand everything about itself in a way that it couldn't understand if it didn't make minutia, creations of creations of creations of creations of creations within an environment. And that environment is himself. So, or itself. So I keep saying him, there's no, there's no him or her. Right. So <laughs> the point is, is for this, this incredible creator being the consciousness of God is not really truly fathomable, even with direct interactions with God, which will be in a, a second, another book. Right. The, it is learning about itself through its creations. And think about what I'm saying. We learn about ourselves through what we create. Absolutely. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. We are a fractal of God, literally. And we are learning about ourselves through our creations. And one of the things that we need to experience to totally understand ourselves is the lower frequencies of the physical universe. And that's where I am right now. That's where you are right now. We could have, we could have reincarnated it into another version of earth. And there are too many versions of earth to actually even get into in this conversation, mm -hmm. but we could have reincarnated into a different version of earth that was operating on the sixth frequency instead of the third frequency. And now we would be, we would have no frame of reference. It would be so different. We wouldn't even be communicating using words, by the way, it would just be telepathy. Right, just thought. Yeah, right. thought and emotion, which is a far, a far more effective way of communicating. Much, right? much more. Yeah, because yeah. not only it's it's feeling and meaning, mental meaning and feeling meaning are imbued simultaneously and concurrently. So as we go up in, in, in frequencies, that's one of the things that we're going to do. And anyone who's telepathic or communicates with angels or uh, aliens or whatever, whatever, they know what I'm talking about. Telepathy is far more effective in one second the information that you get in one second sometimes takes 10 minutes right. to actually try to verbalize. So <clears throat> we're here to experience the minutia because it's how we evolve. It's how our consciousness evolves. And as we evolve, our higher self evolves. As our higher self evolves, God evolves. And then as God evolves, the thing that created God evolves too. And that's a whole nother conversation. Please. So in that, in it, there may be other beings that are doing the same thing. And there may be another God that uh, it created those beings is what is, is the flash that I got from my mind when you just said that is, is am I at least touching on possible uh, interpretation of that, right? Yeah, there's, so when this started happening for me in terms of, you know, through meditation and right. consciousness exploration, <clears throat> which I've been doing since being a child, I started to experience these things that I, I had no frame of reference for. And one of those things was, I could go to the end of the multiverse and you kind of pierce it, kind of like pierce the membrane, like you like right, go right out of the bubble. <clears throat> and then I was experiencing pure source or pure God, literally not a creation, but God itself and be able to interact with God. And then I, and then I, I realized, for, and that's another, another 
I don't even get into that why. I realized that I could leave, that I could literally leave the entire environment. I could literally leave the confines, the gravity of God. Mm -hmm. Sounds bizarre, but this started happening. And as I started happening, there would be like these vast tracks of almost like nothingness, nothingness, nothingness. And my consciousness was moving, moving. And then all of a sudden, I would literally stumble upon a whole other God, a whole other creator. And when I, when this started happening for me, I was like, okay, I've, I've clearly lost it because what, what in the world is happening now? I'm past God. There's nothing past God, right? right. Oh, there is. Oh, there's plenty. So when this first started happening, I, I, I tried to look things up and I realized, okay, the Hindu masters talk about this. So I'm not the only complete wacko that's been experiencing these things. So the Hindu masters talk about, they called it the absolute or, or the all there is. Mm-hmm. Now, some of the Hindu masters experience the exact same thing. There is more than one God. In fact, there's 12. There's 12 gods, literally. Now, these gods are similar, similar, I'm using that word loosely, similar to our God in that the, their intelligence is not fathomable. It's not fathomable. Right. They, have to, they have to reduce themselves to communicate, trust me. So when they communicate with me, I can tell they're shrinking down so I can understand it. So, but there's 12 of them. Mm-hmm. And each one of them created an environment, some kind of like the multiverse and some nothing like it, absolutely nothing like mm-hmm. it, but it's the same process is going on. They are creating within themselves to understand themselves better and they were created by this one ultimate being, this absolute or this all there is that literally is everything. And it realized it became self-aware at some point and literally realized it's everything. It's everything up. It's everything down. It's everything to the left. It's everything to the right. It's everything dimensionally. It's everything frequentially. It's all it. Right. And it, did, it didn't know anything about itself. So what it did was it made 12 creations or 12 gods, almost like drones, and sent them out and said, do me a favor. I don't know anything about me down there. I don't know anything about me over there or, or, or up here. I need some, I need to understand myself. Know thyself. I need to understand myself. Go, tell me, create whatever you want. And as you create, I want you to learn about yourself and you're going to be learning about me because you're going to be inside me. Right. So everything, everything that you create, your creations, creations, creations are learning about themselves. You're going to be learning about it. And as you're learning about it, because I created you and you're part of me, I will be learning too. So that, that long answer is. No, it's my- beautiful. Cause you see it even reflected on a smaller scale. It continues. Um, our God then creates smaller gods, like the sun who creates the solar system, who's, you know, it's a little project and each of the planets become a little, and it goes all the way down to the smallest, tiniest particle is still doing the same thing as you know, we're all just a, a, on a part of it as as you're describing it, I can see it reflected. The idea I'm learning about myself, and then something else smaller than me is learning about itself, and it keeps on going. Right? It's amazing. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of where we get fractals from. Right. Right. It's it it, it, it all works in the same way. And uh, the the twelve other God. Now this is in the Bible. Mm-hmm. The Elohim. The Eli- The Elohim. Yes. Which means it's plural. God. It's God plural. It, that it says it in Genesis. Right. It's. There's not, you know, exactly, right? right. And, and I, you know, I believe we are the Elohim, just a part of it, right? The the Elohim are the other gods. Are the other gods, ah, okay. That's very, what they very are. cool. And and it's in the Bible. Uh, it's in other texts, but it's actually in our Bible. And there's lots of lots of things that have been taken out of our Bible, but that was left in. So there there it is, right there in the Judeo Christian traditions, the Elohim. Now, <clears throat> without going on to a whole nother subject. Yeah, you're probably familiar with the ascended masters of the term ascended masters. Sure. The ascended masters are the children of the Elohim. Right. And that's why they're so odd or or, it's not the right word. That's why they're so advanced and so different and do these amazing things. And it's where we get superheroes from. It's where we get all the Greek and Roman gods from. It's all from the children of the Elohim. They're a direct expression. They're a donation. They're a donation to this God. Because they want to experience, they wanted to keep a part of them within this God. All the other within gods. each of the other gods, they share a little essence of it, literally. And they are, in a way, in a way, you could think of these uh, ascended masters 
from a human perspective. You could mm -hmm. think of them as a, as a finished product. You could think of them as a consciousness that uh, is not germane to, to this God. And that's part of why they are so unusual and can do things that are talked about forever and ever and ever. And they can do those things. Mm -hmm. It's literally because they're made of something that's not from here. And so they're mesmerizing. They are, they're like looking at a, an exotic flower. You can't, you can't take your eyes off them. Yeah. There's, some, there's something about them that is so different. Their energy is so different. Their wisdom is on another level. Their abilities is on another level. Their ability to, 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 to travel anywhere, to understand these things. And now you're starting to see that these ascended masters keep reincarnating because some of the Hindu masters have been ascended masters, Christ, Buddha, Saint Germain, all these, all these beings keep, they do keep coming back. I promise you, they keep coming back and they are the true teachers of humanity. They represent aspects of the greater totality of things that does not necessarily exist within this God. They're an embodiment of the greater totality of things. They fill out the picture and they move the consciousness forward. They, they are the teachers of humanity and they're here to bring consciousness to its next level, which would include the fourth frequency, the fifth frequency, right. the sixth frequency. They are already self-realized masters. They have traveled the multiverse and back, and they understand themselves and the environment. So they are the great teachers. It's like trying to play a video game. And it's like, well, if, if you could just get that avatar that's cleared all the boards and all the levels, and I, I could just be partners with that avatar, and that avatar could teach me how to clear all the boards in this levels. That's what ascended masters do. Yeah, They're teaching everyone how to clear the boards and the levels so they can then realize that they're a master as well. RJ, I've had so much fun talking to you. This has been a blast. I could probably talk to you for two or three <laughs> more hours. So I, we may have to do this again because um, we have more to talk about. But for everybody watching, again, it's supercharged self-healing. RJ Spina, just look it up on Amazon. I should have a link in the description. Uh, you can, your website is ascendthefrequencies.com. Yes, yes. And you have a mobile app that people can download on that, that, that will help them utilize your, 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 the techniques and the processes that you're teaching. Yes. Yes. I'm very, I'm very, you won't hear me say this very often. I'm very proud of, uh, the work that myself and my team did. We took five months. So, uh, what's in that mobile app is really, from my perspective, is truly extraordinary. There's 3D modeling. I hired a company in Ecuador to, to capture some of the things that I see from a higher state of consciousness. So when you're doing the exercises and the protocols within the app, you're actually gonna see what's actually happening. If you had the vision to be able to see wow. in terms of different frequencies, you're gonna see what it looks like. Uh, there's whiteboard animation. So there's really amazing visuals uh, it's an unbelievable way to learn because I love whiteboard animation. You see the hand drawing real yeah. fast. So I hired a great team to do that. There's extraordinary computer graphics. A gentleman in Australia is just an absolute genius. Uh, I hired him to do the state of the art uh, graphics. There's PowerPoints. There's 25 hours of video. This, this app is the most revolutionary and comprehensive application of self-healing that exists and I, I i can't recommend it enough and you can get it through the website well as soon as we're done i'm going to be checking it out i can't wait that sounds fantastic and rj thank you so much for giving me your time and uh welcome to the reality revolution